We have uh, sort of marveled from afar. Uh, we'll cop to it that we don't know a whole lot uh, about the history of Central Arkansas football, but when everything was canceled and you were given the assignment or the, the challenge of putting together a football schedule and managing to do so to the tune of nine games, what was your original mindset of how can we do this? You know, so so I went and talked to our football team just to make sure they were in. You know, I wanted to make sure they wanted to play, they were motivated to play, and, and nobody was opting out, and, and 100%. Everybody wanted to play football this fall. They didn't want to wait. So that, that really gave me the motivation to move forward and try to get a schedule. You know, at, at first we thought our conference would hang in there. I, I really thought if the SEC and the Big 12 were playing, which is obviously our footprint, then we ought to play too. And then, uh, you know, it's just – just issues with testing, issues with uh, having access to that testing, getting results in time. Some just couldn't do it. So we could, and I thought, you know, we need to we need to keep moving forward as long as we can until the virus tells us we can't. And, you know, so far, so good. We're ready to play Saturday. And a very unique schedule. You mentioned it. You're playing Saturday against Austin P and Montgomery, and then a couple of days later you're driving down to Birmingham and you're going to play UAB. So – in college football, Brad, we don't see that very often. We don't see a game on a Saturday and then play again on a Thursday. We would do it some in the NFL, and it's a little bit of a grind, but it sounds like your players and coaching staffs were up for this, and also UAB was very hospitable. Yeah, no doubt about it. It, it worked out, and, and, you know, it's a unique year, so we just, talking to our head coach, you know, we were like, man, we, we better play when we can play, and if that means, you know, our first two games are, are five days apart, Let's get it done, and now it works out that we're going to play the two games before anybody else plays one this year. So that that's exciting as well. Yeah, that, and it's a unique trip. So we're going to head down to Montgomery tomorrow, and we will spend one night in Montgomery, play the game, and then head to Birmingham and stay five nights in Birmingham. And uh, we'll do all our testing protocols with UAB at, at their facility and uh, practice at, at Legion Field all week, which will be a great experience for our, our young men. So excited about that. Brad Teague is the athletic director at Central Arkansas. Brad, did you get significant pushback from any segment of your university, your president, your, uh, your, your chancellors, your parents? Was there any significant pushback when you said, we think we can put together a full schedule? Yeah, it's a great question because if you don't have your president behind you, it, it doesn't work. You know, you can see that in the Big Ten. All the ADs wanted to play. Uh, the majority of the presidents did not, and they're not playing. So fortunately, we've got a president who has done great things for our institution. You know, we're back on campus as a student body. We've got 11,000 students. Uh, he's He's got a whole residence hall ready for quarantining if needed. And, uh, you know, it's just his mindset has been let's forge ahead as an institution. And he's certainly behind, you know, our, our athletic programs as well. And I'll tell you, we're still going to play volleyball and men's and women's soccer and cross country this fall as well. We just want to do all our fall sports in the fall. Something else that I found very unique about this schedule, and you're right, it has been a unique year, but y'all have done a great job of finding games. You've got home and homes with Missouri State and Eastern Kentucky. Again, something we don't typically see in college football, but it's done at other levels of football. So how did those games kind of come together? You know, as, as soon as we were seeing conferences, you, you know, push to the spring, I, I was just reaching out to contact. Certainly Missouri State's a three-and-a-half-hour drive for us. So that's a great proximity game. And the issue is everybody wants home games, right? So we could have played 11 road games and gotten paid for every one of them. I mean, the whole Sun Belt Conference and the whole Conference USA were looking for games, went to the SEC and the Big 12, basically went to a conference only. So we had a lot of opportunities in the FBS. The issue was who can we play in the FCS because there's only 14 teams playing right now that will play this fall, and we're the only one with nine games, of course. So just reached out to colleagues you know in the industry and, and said hey I know you need a home game I need a home game let's just play twice and and those two schools agreed so yeah it, it is unique Brad Teague the athletic director at Central Arkansas is our guest Brad did you have upon the return of your team to campus uh, any spikes in the testing I'm, I'm wondering what hurdles you had to overcome to get a team that was completely tested and completely ready to go from the time they got to campus to what will be this Saturday? Yeah, if you'll recall, you know, the, the NCA was putting out uh, new guidance every week, you know, and, and so I'm thinking back to May, and we got the guidance in May that allowed us and allowed all NCA programs to have voluntary workouts in June. 
Well, we got that information about a week before, you know, the, the end of May. So we were not ready June 1 to bring everybody back. And so got with our medical team and our athletic trainers, and we thought we could have everything ready to go by June 15th. So we allowed any of our football players who lived in the Conway area to come back June 15th for voluntary workouts ended up being about 40. So as soon as any student athlete arrived on campus, regardless of sport, they played, we did a gateway test. And so you had to produce a negative result before you could come on campus. And so from those initial gateway tests in, in June and early July, we had five positives. They were all asymptomatic, so they had to actually do, do a, just a 10-day isolation. So our, our medical professionals and, and Department of Health tell us that uh, asymptomatic folks are 10 days, symptomatic folks are 14 days. So th those five did their 10 days and, and got reacclimated and back, back in the swing. And then uh, once August hit, we started doing the requirement of weekly testing. And so we've tested throughout August. In fact, today got our results for this week. And we have had a total of three positive asymptomatic kids, and they're all uh, non-travel uh, squad folks, so uh, typically freshman walk-ons. So, so far, so good. Brad Teague, the AD over at Central Arkansas, is our guest here on Hanging with Hester and Hanny. Something else that I know is going to be really special is to be able to not only kick off against Austin P, but to be on ESPN, to be on the main ESPN, to be the only ticket in town with all these eyeballs on your game. I know the walk-ons down there in Conway is probably going to be filled as much as it can to be able to <laughs> to watch that game. I, I know it's got to be special to be on uh, ESPN. No, it, it's incredible for our brand and, and for our recognition. And, you know, any any FCS program looks to, to find something like this and you just don't ever get it. So, you know, initially we were one of a handful of teams. You know, you had Notre Dame versus Navy in Ireland. They were going to play a week zero game. And then you had Marshall in East Carolina. We're going to play a game because it was the 50th anniversary of the plane crash. So, you know, there had to be a compelling reason to be able to have a waiver to play week zero. And then the FCS gets the opportunity to play week zero if they have a kickoff classic. And that's what this is. So, you know, we had a handful of games and then all of a sudden you had uh, the COVID issue and, and everybody was asking for waivers to play week zero, just to spread out their season a little better, just in case they needed flexibility to have some weeks off. And so we went from a handful of games to probably 25 games, and I was pretty bummed out about it. And then now, all of a sudden, you know, all the conferences canceling or moving back later in September for start dates, we are the only game. We are the first football game of the year, the first since COVID, and the only game that day. And we're on ESPN, linear channel, regular channel, the main channel at 8 p.m. Saturday night. We're, we're pumped. Brad, I don't know an athletic director in the country that hasn't had to deal with the financial ramifications of COVID-19. I'm guessing that with a unique schedule, you had some unique challenges. What were the most significant ones financially, and how did you solve those? Well, we're playing seven road games, which is unusual. Uh, we only have two at home. So we've got more travel expenses, and then we lost Missouri was our was our guarantee. We play one guarantee game a year. Missouri was this year, and that was about four hundred fifty thousand dollars of revenue that that we will lose. Um, it just so happens that with the three FBS games, we've got uh, UAB is two hundred thousand, Arkansas State's one hundred thousand, and Louisiana Lafayette is is 150,000. So we really net zero there. We got that 450,000 back. So that, that made our budget office really happy. Uh, but, but the challenge is really, uh, again, the testing. So we're testing, you know, when we do gateway testing of the other sports, the spring sports who have come in this week, uh, and then we're, we're testing all of our fall student athletes every week. So we're testing somewhere between 250 and 300 student athletes a week, plus staff and coaches. You know, at 100 bucks a test, that's that gets expensive real quick. So we're doing 25 to 30 thousand dollars a week in testing. And so, uh, luckily, we've had uh, we have a great partnership with our local hospital, who have given us discounts on testing. And then we also have donors who have stepped up to make sure that we can get it done, so we can play. So I, I would tell you, you know, for the FCS, we're probably doing as much testing as as anyone in this country. However, the Big 12 and the Conference USA is now testing three times a week. I think they're doing a PCR test and then a couple of antigen tests each week. So we're doing one PCR test per week and making sure it's within 72 hours of the contest. So uh, we're doing everything we can. Central Arkansas football is not only a great story because you're finding a way to get to that yes to play football games, but also I, I want to let you know 
that we crowned you the 2019 Arkansas State Champions last year because y'all took care of Western Kentucky and Arkansas was not <laughs> able to do so. And so just to let you know, and by the way, my mom has spent uh, some time growing up in Conway, so I already had a love for the school, but we gave y'all the state crown. Well, I, we appreciate that. I, I, I'd forgotten that Arkansas lost to Western Kentucky. I, I appreciate you reminding me of that. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that was a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully you'll give us the 2020 as well. There you go. Brad Teague, you got some fans down here in Baton Rouge. Uh, don't mind telling you. Uh, we're so impressed with what you did. We're going to be uh, we're gonna be Bear fans uh, this Absolutely. year, and you can Thank bet you, you we're going to be watching on Saturday. Thank you so much for your time. Best of luck to you and your school moving forward. Hey, I appreciate you guys, and let's give a shout-out to Lake Charles and our McNeese State family down there and praying yeah. for them. Yeah. Thank appreciate you very much, that. Brad Teague. Thank you. Central Arkansas uh, Athletic Director.